Okay, we're back. Just couldn't get enough of the Ansible goodness, could you? I know how that is. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't love bug fixes and Ansible? Am I right? You know I'm right. We'll get into it in just a second. Make sure I got my water. Got all my stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, hey, stick around till the end. <laughs> or don't. It's a long, it's long, long. You do whatever you want. And wow. So yeah. We were at a point yesterday, I believe we had just set our next bug fix in order. Got to do the googity goo, signing in. Fifty eight commits. So productive. Such product. And I saw a, uh, I saw an article that was congratulating Elgato for moving to a freemium model on their Stream Deck mobile app. I've been kind of thinking about, hmm, could be cool to have a Stream Deck, but it's like, you know, there's actually doing stuff and then there's working on the stream on my priority list. <laughs> I do hope to make it better for you guys, but, and for myself, honestly, that, that's what it really is. It's, it's just a tool to make things easier. But anyway, the point of the story is they're offering a freemium model or you can pay $50 and, and have everything unlocked for the rest of your life if you have an Apple device. Uh, not a lot of Apple sitting around here. Well, that's not entirely true. <laughs> I do like the, the minis. I mean, they make great hardware. Just honestly, I don't... It, for me, the OS doesn't give me enough of an ability to screw around with things to each their own right i'm not looking to start any wars i'm just going to say what i prefer Oop. one second do, 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 do. where am i here yep Just got to check on something real quick. Where'd I go? There I am. All right. Sorry, just have a, uh, a girlfriend who's in need at the moment. Well, there's not much I can do. She's <laughs> out of town right now, but I can at least offer advice. Anyway, where were we? Yeah. So we need to check and make sure if this is even set, right? Let's see. That's happening in copy Z shell. Must be in here. I should probably... So one of the things I've started doing um, when I write out a like a, a console log or whatever 
um, if I plan on keeping it there, I wrap it in an if statement and basically just my own cheapo, hey, am I in dev mode? Then kick out this message. And I've also made it so that uh, in each one, I say the file name that it's in so that when an error message pops up, I have some idea of where it's coming from rather than going and digging through my stuff to go and find it. I just found a sticker on my desk and I can't, I can't think of where the heck this could have come from. It's going on the firewall. Bink. Now it will never sit flat again. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, yeah, because it says that it's in common, right? But that's the role. So I should probably... Let's do... I like that. Do it that way. Cap pasta. Well, that one was easy. There's only two. All right. So this is just basically copying everything over to root and then wait. Copy, copy. So it's not happening there. Oh wait, no, okay. Undefined variable prompt symbol. Is this under files? This must be under files and it's got a Files, where are you at? Files. Files? No. Where are you then? All right. Let's kind of find in here. Let's just go all the way back and search for common. Ah, it's a, it's a template. Okay. I mean, I was pretty sure it was a template because of the J2, but. Templates, templates, where are you hiding? Templates. E comes after A. Let's not forget that. All right. So this is where... Exception occurred. C, okay. Do I need to... right here right this is where I need to I need to make this an if basically so back over here hey, I do want that to be copied do I need to make it a, a default template as well Or can I in J2? Because I think that's the only thing I've got in there that I've modified. Everything else is standard. It's got the basic prompt. undefined prompt symbol is undefined
All right, so it's that one. Does that get called somewhere else? Man, I do not remember what I did here. The worst. Oh, okay, it's right here. Psh, what am I looking at all this for? Okay, so it's this right here. So, quick look. Uh, J2. Can I just put like an or and then a default value? Am I looking at the right? I mean, that doesn't look correct. Oh, I did JS. Right? Yeah. Ginger. It tells the template to print the value. This won't work in expressions. Instead, use set. Okay, so I think I just need to figure out an if, right? If a variable is defined, not empty. Okay. So in this case... the difference between this oh I need to make this the percentage oh, okay and then it does that I just do it on okay so I just need bam percent bang And percent whack, right? So we can say if prompt symbol. if else okay and then percent oh, like so else and then we can just say eh, what's our what are we gonna have as a default huh Let's look. Get emoji.com. Yeah. We can do a ghost. Wait, I think I have the ghost as my hacking laptop. <laughs> a robot leg a brain what are we going to go with a haircut is there like a car wreck or a train wreck <laughs> Maybe unicorns. Maybe we make the default unicorn. Oh, you know what? No. That's the one. 
Sorry, Sharks fan. It's all one word, right? In depth, yeah. And then we just do the same thing here. Dun, 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 dun. Copy. Pasta. What do you think? Gonna work? Let's find out. Uh, first. Bug and it was... Um, let's go with that. Set a test. Um, added if statement to wrap. Prompt. Symbol, variable. And roles, common templates. ZSHRC. J2. I don't think I need to put all that. I mean, it's going to show me what's been edited, but. All right. Now. Okay, it still thinks I'm there. We want to do. Ansible Playbook. Do I have you in production? I'm trying to remember what I did here. Nope, you're in lab. Yep. Site.yaml. Limit to test. I do want to track this one down. Make sure we have an issue for that as well. to stop with the uh, updating packages to their latest version. <laughs> I need to start skipping that. takes forever, especially on this little thing, which I'm afraid to put in front of the camera because I don't want to accidentally unplug it. It's got kind of a weird setup at the moment. Ha, 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 no. Hates my freedom. You see some flashes. second.
and we're back and still waiting at updating packages i didn't unplug something did i <laughs> it's actually also possible i'm currently running it off of a uh usb hub which is not ideal uh but it's possible it's running a little slower because of that actually am i still connected to it nope but i could be Tested, menu-driven, system configuration. It's got a lot of IPs. <laughs> and it's funny, this is, from a security perspective, this has all got to go. Yeah, like, this is kind of cool and all, but... It says, hey, here's everything you need to know. There was something I saw recently. What was it? B top? I've been using H top forever. B top plus plus. Oop. I rebooted. <laughs> uh, but we can t let's check on here. Is it a thing here? It is. Uh, let's see what it looks like on here. Because it's pretty much the first thing I always do. Oh, hey, Numplex. Uh, it's, well, afternoon. Two o'clock. Or 1423, if you're so inclined. How are you doing? It reminds me, I want to... Dun, dun, dun. Edit. We want to add a tile. A widget. Let's see. I mean, I think there's... You've got, what, four time zones in India? I'm remembering that right, right? We'll just say... I don't need to be 100% accurate, right? India has a single time zone, really. Why do I remember multiples? That's Indian. Yeah, let's go look. Time zone map. I like being able to just pop that up and say, oh yeah, I know what time it is where you are. <laughs> well, this map sucks. Let's try a different one. There we go. Is this the same one that was loading before? Hey, I see at least two right there. What's it called? IST? Well, I mean, a little, little party, I got another one. Just to you. I 
guess. That doesn't seem right. What are you? Why doesn't it show me, like, it should show, is it plus or minus five? That can't be right. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's not it. That's definitely not it. It says plus seven. So, no. Wow, they made this kind of difficult, didn't they? Plus six. It goes three. Is there... <laughs> That's funny. It takes me to the exact same map. But it won't tell me... Like, okay, I know it's plus five. Plus three. So it doesn't accept standard. Let's try. Maybe it'll do that. Maybe if I just put Mumbai. Nope. Wow. Whoever wrote this is crazy. In school, we were taught that multiple time zones optimize daylight, boost the economy, and enhance productivity by aligning schedules of natural cycles. Despite this, the concept has not been implemented for the past 77 years. <laughs> Yeah, the colonial hangover. Tell me about it. Ours is about 200 years as well. At least we all started kicking people out, right? <laughs> Can I just do plus five? Will that fly? No. It's kind of crazy that they even go so far as to have a map, right? Does it have the... Oh, it's plus 530 on this one. A lot of people don't really realize how big the U.S. is. <laughs> I mean, for most of us, you know, one state is about the size of of a lot of countries. <laughs> IST time zone. Definitely not Europe. You know, it's probably... Not America. Come on. There's too many of those. Not Jakarta, not there. Nope. I know you guys get lumped in with Asia quite often. 
well, uh, California is just a whole different beast on its own. I mean, it's what, like the ninth largest economy in the world on its own. And it just, <laughs> it is definitely its own beast. And I wouldn't have thought that this would be this interesting. Dun, 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 dun. It's like Antarctica. Hmm. I mean, Istanbul's close, but it's like that way. Let's see. No, nope, that's still plus three, not plus five. And technically it's plus five and a half. No, it's definitely more. East <laughs> than that. No, there's a lot of these that are plus three that probably shouldn't be plus three. I don't know, India has been been up and coming for a while. I mean, there's a reason. There's definitely a reason or there's definitely a knock on effect of technology jobs going there. And uh, I'm sure you guys are seeing s at least some of the benefits. <laughs> and who who organizes it? You know, I wonder, it's probably just one of the, you know what? There we go. That's, that's close enough. <laughs> We're going to add you to the list here. <laughs> it's, maybe I'll just, uh, I'm going to do this. That'll be the name of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely had it for quite a bit longer. I, I mean, you did get a little bit lucky in that Afghanistan took on the Russians for you, though. <laughs> you didn't have to deal with those guys. But England's no slouch, and... China's being a real jerk to you guys as well, so yeah. I don't know if that's winning or not. <laughs> you know, it's funny, that's one that I always forget about, but yeah, the, the Turks were quite a bit bigger of a world power for quite a while but then i mean basically for them world war one was kind of eh. <laughs> yeah did this finish Well, prompt symbol is undefined. Well, yeah, that's why I checked. Where'd you go? Where'd my templates go? Tasks, templates, you. Uh, Canada's actually pretty close, but I think they can really only reliably populate like 10% of it. 
The rest of it's just ice. <laughs> the great frozen north, as it were. Hit prompt symbol, then do that. Else, and if. Do I have it somewhere else? Bing, bada bing, bada boom. Uh -huh. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you've ever seen the movie Canadian Bacon, that's what's going to happen. Do it again with a couple of these. And whilst we do that, just double check I'm doing this right. There we go. <laughs> Great movie if you haven't seen it. If you're into older comedies, too. They're from that, uh, that time period in the 80s where everything was... Oh, it was 95, but it was a carryover from the 80s where everything was kind of a buddy movie. These are very, very different <laughs> slices of ham. Yeah, it's I, honestly I I think it's got some funny stuff in it. It it's more kind of Caddyshack, uh, the classics of comedy, that sort of stuff. Wow, those are some heavy movies: Casablanca and Citizen Kane. And I, I'm here with John Candy. <laughs> You're throwing out some artwork. <laughs> those, those definitely are in a, uh, a whole different vein. <laughs> Allegedly, that should be working. Are we going to error out again? Prompt symbol. I wonder if that's causing a problem. Well, I mean, Casablanca is definitely much farther on the older side than I would generally prefer. I'm more, uh, well, honestly, I'm, I, I love horror movies. I'm, I'm all about the horror movies. For me, there's nothing, there's nothing better than the first Nightmare on Elm Street or, uh, well, let me just look over at my collection here. I've got, uh, the Child's Play series, um, Cloverfield, the, the first Cloverfield was awesome. Yeah, with Johnny Depp. Uh, I've got a thing definitely for Friday the 13th. That's kind of a given. Dusk to, uh, from Dusk Till Dawn. Great, great set of movies there. Uh, and then the crossovers. Like uh, Shaun of the Dead absolutely like that's that's up here for me 
I actually just rewatched both of the Zombieland movies last night because <laughs> couldn't sleep. Ah. Apocalypse Now is a great Vietnam War movie. Um, the thing is, though, that it's in the... That's a time period where people started realizing that the Vietnam War was terrible, and it became kind of the in thing to make movies about how bad it was for Americans. There's, like... The Vietnamese are totally just a, a paper background for how terrible it was for the Americans. So there's there's a little uh, bias in it, but great movie. It is a great movie as soon as you can get past that. <laughs> um, they're not real characters. Like they're they're set dressing. They're not. They're not important to the story of a war that's happening in their country or their like they they don't matter in the story at all and it's it does it a disservice like <laughs> a lot but they are they're still good movies you just have to recognize that that's a time period where you know uh, Hollywood was finding out about things like PTSD and uh, just like what war does to human beings, even if they're the quote unquote winners. And yeah. Andrew Garfield playing Desmond. Let's see. Hacksaw Ridge? Oh, yeah. that That's a rough movie. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's actually, there's a, there's an older, uh, oh, what's the, gets Clint Eastwood, Heartbreak Ridge. Heartbreak Ridge is, is a rough one as well. There, um, there's actually a really good one about the, uh, what was the name of that movie? Uh, Three Kings, no. Oh, Jarhead was good. I liked Jarhead. It was kind of a messed up. But it's not the one I'm thinking of. Maybe I need to do... No. I mean, American Sniper's a decent movie. It's it's a bit grandstandy. Uh, Great War on Terror. <laughs> Just basically, you know, everything from the moment that the United States declared war on terror. not remember the name of the movie. It'll come to me at some point, I'm sure. All right, let's see. What did this thing say? Boom. Event.
I know the prompt symbol's undefined. That's why I'm checking to see if it was defined. You know, I, I'm 90% certain I've seen it, but I don't remember it. <laughs> it's one of those, like, in this time period, they... It's, it be starts becoming about individual scenes from movies, like Three Kings. It's all about that moment when they drive up on the, uh, the camel out in the desert and it steps back onto a mine and blows up all over them. Jarhead, it's, it's definitely the, uh, the, the moment where he's walking across the, the desert after they've lit all of those things on, all of the oil wells on fire and they're just complaining about how terrible it is. <laughs> I don't know about Desert Fury. Manchurian Candidate's a decent movie. I don't know how that falls into a Gulf War movie. I guess it happens in the time period. Where was I? There I am. So, do I just... Do I need to expand it out? Is that probably the problem? Same thing here. I mean, I don't know why this would work. and it really cares. Oops, that's backwards. The Lord of the Rings, yeah. The Lord of the Rings was a, that was an epic set of movies. Well, it was, it was also um, the Lord of the Rings basically made New Line because they made a huge bet on just getting all three filmed and then releasing them in a staged way. So they cut down on a lot of their filming costs. And basically after that, New Line started printing money. Like that, that was a hell of a bet that paid off really well for them. Let's let this run real quick. I got to check on something for one sec. And back. 
Um, you know, I don't know. I wasn't in school when it was <laughs> when it came out. I don't doubt that uh, on in business schools they absolutely should. Uh, in film schools, if they don't, they're silly. Uh, I don't know what sort of bearing it would have outside of uh, the the literature aspect in you know lower level school. I could be wrong though. I mean, I don't doubt that it's it's approved reading at, at you know each of those levels, which would mean they would want to tie it in with the the movies in some way, right? Besides, half of the teachers at that level are like, "Oh, I can <laughs> I can spend my Friday watching a movie rather than working." I don't think it's actually banned. It not well. Again, that's one of those things where, um, when it comes to American politics, it, it's a big place, and it's part of the reason that we're broken up into states. I, I seem to remember something about it was removed from uh, allowed reading in like Kansas, maybe Florida, but. For the most part, like states each make their own approved readings, uh, so it wouldn't be so much banned as it's just not allowed to be in the library of a, of certain schools in certain areas. And even then, like it's not like they're gonna if they have it, you know, take it out back and throw it on a fire. It's probably just gonna stay there until someone gets around to realizing, oh, hey, we're not supposed to have this. A lot of those things are just, they're very specifically done to very specifically get a headline for a very specific amount of time. And then they just quietly go away because no one ever follows up on it. Like it, it's, it's one of the worst things about our current, uh, the current culture of the United States, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a vast difference between states. Um, I mean, some are closer to others, but there's, there's a lot of... The initial, the original idea um, was that the only thing that the federal government did was regulate the interaction between the states. So it was it was kind of a lot more like uh, like the EU in that way, and just like the EU, the federal side started saying, "We want more power. We want more to do," and you know, slowly but surely. The thing, the, uh, the thing about government is that it exists only to make itself bigger. But I'm, I'm biased. I'm definitely farther along the libertarian scale. But that's, I'm a reactionary sort of person. So if everybody were 100% free to do whatever they wanted, I would probably be a bit more on the socialism side. I don't know. <laughs> They bounce back and forth. Um, well, no. Uh, <laughs> it, the short way of putting it is, is California kind of wins all of those conversations. Um, but by size... Yeah, when you're looking at like uh, per capita, uh, there's probably uh, a conversation to be had there. Uh, I think like number of billionaires kind of thing. Yeah. The funny thing is, is that there's not going to be a lot of billionaires that live in California. Like, do you see that number? 
<laughs> but they don't live here because the taxes here suck. Like generally speaking, if if the billionaire is in California, they probably pay the majority of their taxes in uh, Connecticut, maybe Vermont, possibly Nevada. They just happen to be here on paper. Now, as far as rents go, well, you you claim you claim your income in the place that you're considered a resident. So it's just wherever you live. Um, you have to select a primary residence. When you have that kind of money, I mean, you just buy a house in there and that's your primary residence. So that's how it works. It's not really a loophole. It's, it's kind of how it's meant to be. Um, you only get taxed where you live. You pay sales tax any place you visit, right? Especially part of part of the, the entire thing is if you don't like how a state is doing something, go to a different one. If if that meant that you then just had to double your taxes, like it, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, right? I mean a lot of people would call it a loophole, but it's it's very specifically meant that way. <laughs> I didn't see, did we error out the same way again? Yes, we did. So why? So this claims I can test it to see if a variable is defined. Um, so I'm just going through my my Ansible templates for my home lab. Uh, I tr I tried to. I've been trying to make sure that I have everything more programmatic uh, for my spaces. So it's not just like, oh, what did I do over here? Um, and one of the things, this right here is a template of a of the Z shell RC. And the only thing I'm doing custom in it is I make it so that the prompt is different depending on what machine I'm on. So like, this is my gaming machine. If I... Uh, let's go to, if I go to my storage machine, it shows a, a file cabinet. Oops. Uh, if I go to my primary DNS server, it's a castle, things like that. And I have that actually in variables for each one of them. So that they can all get set. Um, but it, I'm trying to make it so that if there is no variable, it's going to say, okay, we'll default to the fish. <laughs> And you know what? I left that in there. I wonder if that was the problem. We'll see. So basically this just describes my inventory file here, which is just a list of all of the machines that I have. And each one of those machines, uh, let's go here, basically is included as 
in a role based on their host, which gets set here in the inventory file. And based on these roles, it'll go into this roles folder and run the proper things for it. So right now I'm, on, I'm limiting it to test. So it's gonna only run common and the Waza agent roles. And right now I'm just troubleshooting through common because it worked fine on a, a known set of machines, but I'm adding in uh, a new one and it's failing in a couple of places. So just bug fixing and screwing around with it and having conversations. <laughs> So here, uh, let me go. These are my known machines. These are the machines that I've I've been working on, and I, I've got everything pretty dialed in. It's it's very well uh, set on how they're going to work, how I expect them to work, what I want them to do. Each one of them, like some of them, are going to be. These are specifically Kubernetes and it says that they're x86 or uh, standard CPU based and they're just workers this would be for the controller which I don't have an x86 controller yet but then here's an arm controller oh, no that's an arm worker then I have arm controllers and then I basically create the groups going down and apply all of these different variables to them. And then I'm working off of this set now because I'm ignoring all of this that I just showed you. <laughs> and then it just goes into tasks. It starts with main. It just starts doing all of these things. Like this just verifies that these applications that I have here are installed. And it makes sure that it, that's true on all of them. But since I added this new one in, I'm finding that there's edge cases that I hadn't thought of. And so I'm just running it over and over again and finding those edge cases and trying to fix them and work around them. And I probably don't need to run the extra verbose anymore because I know what the problem is. I just need to figure out why keeps telling me that prompt symbol is undefined, but I know that. Sure, go for it. Always happy to help. Does AI security fall under cloud or is it a separate field? It's, it can be a separate field, but it's definitely strongly related to cloud. Um, a lot of the, there's a lot of overlap there. Primarily when you're thinking about uh, security, you, you wanna look at what the differences are and how it's defended. Um, Generally speaking, the only real uh, AI security specific thing is mathematically validating that it's at least somewhat immune to, to poisoning. Um, the idea of, of sending it enough bad data that it gets retrained into being worse or giving up data. Um, there's, there's kind of a big problem with 
uh, chat GPT and, and those things that are doing all of the uh, coding sort of stuff. Like when I'm filling things in and the AI offers me a, an example, a lot of times I'll take it. But you have to realize that when it comes to programmers, maybe 10, 15% are actually good, uh, which means that's going to be the lowest amount of uh, addition to those AI models. It's mostly going to be people who are not great at programming. So you're, you're starting off with the worst possible code, essentially. Um, that's kind of the the major facets of AI. Uh, can you poison it? Can you trick it into giving information that it shouldn't uh, from a security side? And then the rest of it is basically cloud or traditional security. Uh, how do you keep its servers safe and things like that? Uh, secondarily, if you're a pen tester or bounty hunter, can you transition into AI security? Oh yeah, model poisoning is absolutely a thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, as a pen tester or bounty hunter, at that point, it's kind of, it's because it's the other side of the, um, the other side of the coin. One of the things that I heard said, uh, about specifically, uh, police officers, but it, it's kind of the same idea is that, uh, police officers only have to. Uh, police officers can screw up all day. They only have to get it right once to catch the person. Whereas bad guys have to be right all the time, over and over and over again. And they, they have to not screw up, right? So uh, it's kind of the same thing on the, the security side of things, uh, but a little bit in reverse. As, as a pen tester, you have to know all of the things because at any point you could be put into a space where you have to, you have to try anything. You have to try just doing uh, social engineering, or you have to try, you have to understand that AIs are uh, subject to poisoning or subject to, uh, what's it called? I think it's hallucinations. Uh, and, you know, no different ways that those have been triggered in the past so that you can try to apply the same principles. Uh, so when you're on the defense side, you can afford to be a little bit more specialized on the attacking side. You, you kind of just have to be ready to do anything. <laughs> uh, lastly, would it be more challenging to switch from pen to cloud security or from cloud security to pen? Well, I think you got the answer there. Uh, you're going to need to to do the attacking side of things is a much broader scope of tools without a lot of specialization. Um, it's, it's really important that you're able to remember how past attacks were done and figure out ways to apply them currently, or honestly, even just go searching through the databases of, of uh, weaknesses and apply them properly. Whereas on the defense side, you can really specialize down. Um, it would be a lot harder to go into pen testing, I would say. Yeah, starting from the pen testing side, but I mean, it, it also depends if you're doing pen testing and you never see a, a cloud attack, you know, that's gonna become a weaker area for you. So I know how much you love, it depends. <laughs> Oh, I should totally just combine these. 
I don't need to be this. Yeah, basically, it, it's it is a lot easier to go from uh, attacking to defending. Uh, in in a security sense. <laughs> and they are they are still, you know, very different tool sets that you're using, but understanding the attacking side gives you in my opinion a lot more of an in-depth perspective on uh, the defensive side whereas if you've spent your entire time on the defensive side you spend a little bit less, you get a little bit less practice in uh, thinking outside the box of here's my checklists, here's the things I have to make sure are taken care of, and that's the best I can do. It's not to say from the defensive side that you can't also just red team it and uh, act like an attacker at times. Yeah, there's there's always a, a team aspect on the defense side and priorities. And I mean, if something one of the things that comes up a lot, especially in the CISSP is just like the value, you know, are you going to spend a million dollars to protect a $10,000 machine no why why would you do that whereas on the attacking side whatever you can get for free <laughs> just so that it's obvious. Let's get rid of the Vs. Well, security in general is, uh, I would say each of the fields are probably uh, 80 to 90% overlap. Um, it, everything kind of matters. It's just a matter of how much. Um, and they, they all kind of matter in the same ways. Like uh, the idea of like you said, AI security, you know, from the perspective of cloud security, if you're not at least tangentially aware of how to secure an AI algorithm or an API, then you're kind of, you're probably going to lose your job. <laughs> yeah. The, the actual specializations in security, I mean, let's think about it this way. When it comes down to it, security specialization is just that. It is a specialization in understanding the principles of security. Things like understanding how floodlights work in a parking lot are roughly the same as understanding where instrumentation needs to be put in a network 
And you do, as a security specialist, need to know that broad spectrum. Does that make sense? I mean, security itself is already a specialization. So you're looking more at prestige classing. <laughs> Gotta grab me some more water. One sec. I'll just leave you with the sultry sounds and activity log. Zip. We, not we. Why do we get the same error? What's going on here? Let's see if I can find something. Actually, I wonder if. Nothing here. I could probably just set a variable outside. Let's see, so I'm including Interesting. So it's jumping back one. There. So I'm including that. I'm not even using it, but I'm including it anyway. <laughs> I wonder if I should just put that in there. is going to be defined. What do I normally eat? Honestly, whatever's quick and easy. <laughs> At 
This week it's been microwave burritos because somehow I have a bunch of them. I mean, under normal circumstances, I, I do enjoy cooking. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, anything you put in the microwave is fast food, right? I'm definitely not the poster child for eating healthy. I do it on occasion, and I do enjoy when I have the time to just, like, sit down and, and cook something properly. Um... It's just rare that I do lately. I wonder if I just make default prompt a thing. I feel like I'm missing something in this if. KFC is, well, I, I'm hit or I'm back and forth on KFC. Like uh, sometimes I like their sandwiches. When they have popcorn chicken, I, I will eat the heck out of some popcorn chicken. I do miss. And I was unfortunate that they, in my mind, it's unfortunate that they switched from their potato wedges to the French fries. Their potato wedges were the best. <laughs> Although, if I'm getting chicken, uh, it's got to be Popeye's. Popeye's is my favorite for, for chicken. And that's blasphemy. I know a lot of people have been Chick-fil-A. Mm, it's good, but... <laughs> Does Ansible just not recognize the if? If variable. Okay. Is that really? Why did they say if? Well, let's see if this in fact fix it. <laughs> so I, I have a love hate with Starbucks. I feel like they've they've destroyed the value of uh, or they've destroyed the cost of a cup of coffee. Like I. I love coffee, but I'm a coffee black, no cream, no sugar, just coffee. And like, I mean, that should be like a dollar. They charge like four or five dollars for that here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, but their coffee is better than a lot of their competitors. So, did they destroy it or did they make it better? I don't know. Because of them, every place else is trying to do better coffee too. So, and honestly, I probably wouldn't love coffee as much as I do if it wasn't for there being a Starbucks everywhere and knowing that it's always going to taste the same ish. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can too. I, I can, I can buy a little bag of coffee as well and make it myself. And for the most part, I do. Uh, it's the only time I really buy f from a Starbucks now is when I'm traveling, or uh, specifically when I'm driving. <laughs>
every time I see this now, yesterday's stream, I spent an hour trying to get these files to actually copy before I realized that I was doing a dry run on the command the entire time. And I say that specifically so that again, I can remind myself, don't do that. <laughs> There's nothing like a stupid mistake to teach you not to make stupid mistakes, or at least that stupid mistake. It's, uh, it's funny, when I was younger, I used to always joke that stupid should hurt. And the older I get, the more I realize that it can. It definitely can. <laughs> Wait, did we go through? No. Okay, it's the Audit D stuff. And the security stuff. Huzzah! It is fixed! So why... <laughs> The if statement is comparable to the Python statement in its simplest form. You can use it to test if a variable is defined, not empty, and not false. Except that's not what it does. You need specifically to say that it's defined. Oh, no, I, I don't. We're still at a point where there could be more bugs, but it's at least I'm, I'm on to the next bug. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, this seems to be doing pretty well, actually. I still need to find this little bugger. But this one... Do, do, do. Moment and closed. <laughs> Bugger off. Actually, it's kind of, I mean, in that particular phrase, get this bugger going, it's kind of the same thing, actually. Just to stand in for the F word. Uh, probably. Long, long way back. Actually, no, I, I know for a fact that at some point, uh, there was a person from my family that was on one of the three, uh, no, it was the Mayflower specifically. Well, I say I know that, but the number of people who claim that they know that, that ship would need to be like 12. <laughs> One of the first uh, settlement ships that came over from England. And no, I haven't done DNA tests because I am a security person. Um... Most of the major companies have had uh, breaches and at some point we're going to be doing more biometrics and once your DNA is out there, it's not that big of a step with AI to have biometrics be just that easy to make. So 
Is it paranoid? Yes. But that's... Welcome to the world of security. <laughs> I, mean, I don't doubt that at some point somewhere it's already been collected it's probably in a database somewhere i mean it, like like they say never attribute to uh malice what can be attributed to incompetence i mean just the number of medical appointments or tests or things that I've had in my life there's no doubt that it's just been chucked in a filing cabinet somewhere and someone said oh hey we got to digitize these and it's all out there but I know that I've personally taken lengths to do whatever I can do <laughs> I've had some friends that have been rather shocked by what they found. Actually, one of my nieces um, by marriage found, thought that she was Chinese and found out that she's like 78% uh, Vietnamese. <laughs> Whoops. I mean, can they even get that? Technically, a big chunk of her family is uh, Laotian. So, like, Laos, Vietnam, you know, they're right next to each other. It, that's, it wasn't as shocking to me, but... <laughs> Persian. Well, I mean, that area, there's Persian, there's like a, a pretty big mix from the Turkish side and there being invasions and that sort of stuff. That makes sense. It's a lot, though. <laughs> Especially if you weren't expecting it. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> it's like the... Uh the two largest genetic donors like worldwide Genghis Khan and Elvis <laughs> another one that that comes up a lot i think it's like wilt chamberlain the the basketball guy 
How do you know he didn't? I mean, they didn't really test for any of them back then. And what, someone going to tell him no? <laughs> well, I'm specifically talking about uh, Genghis Khan, but Elvis too. I mean, they did have some understanding at that point, right? Yeah, Wilt, Wilt Chamberlain. I think that's his name. Like, what's the... Uh... that guy <laughs> yeah he was an NBA player yeah, all of the nine hostages wow Interesting. I haven't actually read this article. I'm going to add this to my list. Here's my notes. Last, oh wow, it's, it was originally published and it was last updated this year. That's crazy. But that's what you want to see. Come back and fix that stuff, right? Although I wonder what, the, what changed. I might have to compare it to the Wayback Machine too. Well, let's... Let's see if it even shows up. June 24th, when it was last updated, is the first time it shows up. That sucks. The, the internet time machine? Have you ever, never seen it? So this is what this page looked like on June 24th. So when you see something that's been, uh, been updated, you should always check and see like, this is, this is the number one thing you can do to find out if news has been changed and things like that, uh, because it happens and you can go and, and validate it. Like there, there's some really crazy stories about it, but like, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. 
go back. Like if you put in, look at Microsoft. You can go back to see what their page looked like in 1996. I mean, some of the stuff like the images are missing. You know, they they only keep the web page. But check that out. Ooh, <laughs> best experience with Internet Explorer. And it kind of gives you an idea of like, you know, how many different snapshots there are over time. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's it's super helpful. Um, honestly, uh, it's just one of many things that's really useful from a security perspective. And those those things are called OSINT. They're all in the OSINT framework. And it just gives you like this site. A lot of the things, don't get me wrong, there's there's some stuff that once it was discovered it's on this site, they started changing them. So don't go putting anything information, you know, anything that could be traced back to you into any of these pages. But like just links to different things that you can get from stuff. And see, like I said, some of them, they found out that they're on that site, so they closed them down. But this takes you to a... That's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, using Facebook stats of your friends to figure out when they're asleep or your enemies. You can do... Uh, what about threat intelligence? Oh, let's do some OPSEC stuff. Persona creating. I want to generate a fake identity. There you go. There's everything. You, you have a fake identity. You're done. As long as you can keep that story, you can copy and paste that into Facebook. Bam. You, you're a new person for at least anybody doing a cursory search. This is one of the greatest things an attacker can possibly have. And from a defensive perspective that you can use to say, hey, what, what's going on here? Exif tools, those are super useful. Because you can pull out all the data that gets attached to photos. Emulate phones on your computer for sending texts and that sort of stuff. Let's see. Vehicle purchase records. See, and when, when a page looks like this, it's definitely been taken over. Just throw that away. <laughs> General people search. Wow, well, that I think I have too many of these open right now. Just pick one at random. A lot of these, they're going to just say, they're going to let you go all the way through and they're going to show you some fake data and say, oh, if you want to see the real data, it's going to cost money. But, you know, if you're doing it professionally, just charge your client.
But yeah, OSINT in general is kind of silly. Let's close some of these things. Too much stuff open. I can't read any of it. This is a really interesting design, too. I always forget how weird this site is. Way back imagery. Oh, these are cool. I love looking at the old old maps. Like, uh... Let's look at... Actually, let's look at the Tahoe area. Oop. Let's see what that looked like in 2014. Wow, not a whole lot's changed. <laughs> I expected something more dramatic. Yeah, basically old Google Maps. I anything, any place that they can get satellite imagery from, right? Actually, one of the cooler ones would probably be now. These ones. Yeah, I think that's one. You see that? <laughs> oh, okay, it's just a darker photo. That's weird. It's blacked out. But yeah, I love screwing around with this stuff. I mean, finding the uh, the islands that China's making. And apparently that's not one of them. But yeah, I can get lost doing this forever. <laughs> These are probably the ones that I use most often these two sets right here you know anytime you get a link and you want to be like okay who are these guys you know you've got your who is you got your subdomain stuff like that or you're looking at firewall logs i am not at liberty to say <laughs> yeah that's one of those things eh. if I had I wouldn't talk about it 
<laughs> All right, now we've still got the this issue duplicate key. Line two, column one. Why are you popping up in main? Oh, that's all the agents. Default main. All right, what's it saying here? Oh, is there already a... Oh, this might be easier to fix than I thought. Oh, okay, so it's going to be set either way. Actually says it's set twice in this file. It is. Why is it set twice? That's weird. I guess I copied and pasted weird. Two fifteen fifty five. The only thing that's different is register. This doesn't have register. Oops. Check out. just run it again because that error pops up quick uh just doing it really uh <laughs> just start with the hack the box sort of things and then just work your way up i mean you'd be surprised how far how far just downloading these VM images and having a machine that has Kali Linux on it. I mean, that's, that's going to teach you a whole lot. I mean, don't just pick Kali because I recommend it. There's, there's other, um, Parrot OS is another one. Never heard of Black Arch. That's, I mean, it makes sense. But I mean, like I said, last time we chatted, you know, just go do it and find out what you enjoy. I wouldn't say anybody specifically prefers Kali. Uh, just most of the training stuff points to it, so it's what they know. It is one of the earlier uh, primarily security focused OS. Uh, but, and this is, this is really important, do not use it as your primary machine unless you are very aware 
of everything that it's doing. Uh, it is by default insecure. It is, it's, it's an attacking tool. Um, it's not a defending tool. So if you only have one machine, build up a VM and put it on that is what I would recommend. But most of these security tools are set up around the idea that they are 100% open and completely disposable. Uh, you use them for the one job and then you wipe that machine or you just delete them, throw them away and do a fresh install. They're, they're not long-term OSs. You can use them as it, it's just they're not great for that. I'm going to have to poke around though at Black Arch. I've always wanted to do an Arch install, but I'm... I'm not that much of a Linux user. <laughs> How's Alpine? Alpine's not a security. It's... Uh, I guess it's a secure... Uh, in my mind, IPCOP is a free Linux distribution, and then I'm like, wait a minute, this is German. <laughs> there was actually, there was something that I, I ran across. Uh, Talos. I want to try Talos. I should actually... I don't want to do it in Docker, but I would like to download... I don't want in Docker... Docker... Installation, bare metal, that's what I'm looking for. Put that in my list of things to try at some point. Exactly. Uh, yeah, if you, there is a danger of you being attacked. Well, not. there's always a danger of you being attacked. Uh, the problem is that with Kali, you're in a, you're in a higher potential position of danger uh, because the surface area that's available on Kali for attack is much higher than most other distributions. And it's it's that way by default. The idea is that you know what you're doing, you know what your tools are doing, and you're going to use it for that purpose. Um, if if you feel like you aren't sure, then it's not a good daily driver. You, you can use it as that, but... There's a reason I don't. <laughs> I kind of feel like I have a pretty good understanding of how it all works, but that's just one more thing that I don't want to worry about. Did I forget something? But I have a VM for it for when I do use it. And what I usually do is I take this one, which has it installed, I clone it, I use that one, and then I throw that one away. And I go back to the clone one, and I keep that updated, but I never actually use it.
Wait, what? Go away. Oh, it's just called metal. It does. Uh, Kali in a VM is, is just another machine, basically. Uh, the only thing that's weird is sometimes you have to kind of fight against the way that your virtual environment does networking. Networking in uh, virtual is always just a little bit different than it is in real life. And in a lot of cases, that's what you're practicing attacking is network services. So there, there can be some adjustments, some things to change or look at differently. Um, but in a lot of cases, just learning to recognize those and realize those becomes important as well. I mean, if you're attacking anything in the cloud or anything, honestly, 99% of what you're going to be pen testing is going to be in a VM anyway. So understanding how to work in a VM and how to break out of the VM and, and that sort of stuff is just one more tool. Metal arm AMD. I so that's the one I want. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's unmount you. Oh, there you are. Alrighty. If I don't see you, it was awesome talking to you. Thanks for swinging by. Anytime. Happy to help. We'll just make it in here. I'm not going to make a whole new sub project for it. Where'd you go? Sidero Labs. It's just tell us. All right. Grab you so I have it. Thank you. 
Yep, that one. All right, fine then. Yeah, just a uh, yeah, generic Linux. We'll just give you one CPU. Let's see how it goes. I mean, a big part of running these Ansible libraries or Ansible scripts is just having the ability to. Whoa, what? That's weird. Anyway, uh, the, the entire purpose of having the Ansible scripts is to kind of standardize and, and make it more streamlined and more secure. So having something that's dedicated to K8s could be fun, huh? I'm not sure what it's telling me here, though. I may need to go to a quick start. But before we do that, quick break. are acting really weird right now oh no they're back okay I was worried that maybe running this VM was causing a problem stages maintenance okay so let's look at this quick start stuff Get started, guide. We'll copy and pasta you over here, too. See, this is one of my problems with Redmine right here, is you got the description and then you have like notes that get added, but they're all like, all of this basically clutters up the notes. I wish I could just edit in here there's probably a plugin or something for that but I don't know where it is and I haven't bothered looking Talos has no SSH access oh that's less than ideal and why would it? Yeah. I do not understand 
I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here real quick, but the number of package controllers or package managers is just too damn high. I don't want to install a package server on top of my already existing OS's package server or package manager. I, I just, I've got a package manager for Snap. I've got a package manager for Apt. I've got a package manager for Flatpak, a package manager for Homebrew. Like, I just have to go back and figure out how I installed all of these things. It, it's rant over. <laughs> I mean, is it really that hard to get something into apt? I, I just, or into yum? I don't know. Let's make sure we're not on there. Actually, we're going to start with this. I mean, I'm, I'm already a little bit off just by the fact that it needs its own command. If you're going to be the, if you're going to be the OS for Kubernetes, why wouldn't you just make a Kubernetes plugin and put it in Kubi control? Again, <laughs> rant off. I'm sure that this is absolutely awesome and there's a reason that they're at, I mean, they're at 1.7, so people are using them. They're still ongoing. There's got to be a reason for it. And I just have to shut up and accept it. <laughs> Installed. Uh, next step. So we got Talos Control. We have network access, probably. We have the images. In order to configure Kubernetes, Talos needs to know what the endpoint will be. Because we're only creating a single control plane node in this guide, we can use it directly. Okay, we've got that. Its IP is right there. 12257. The endpoint should be formatted like Okay, where? Configure Talos. Okay, there we go. Oops, I need this one. Gen config. Cluster name is just an arbitrary name. So we're going to say, maybe I just do vert. And then the endpoint 192.168.122.57. No scheme. And ports. Oh, okay. You'd think 
it would be like, oh, hey, it seems like you didn't put the defaults in. Would you like me to put the defaults in? Just me. But I suppose that might be over-engineered for a version 1.7. Three files are created in my current directory. Whoops, I don't want them here. Um, I need to move star period YAML. Thankfully, it is. Y A N L to Yay, there we go. These are created. Okay, cool. Two types of machine configs, cool. Now we need Talus Control, Apply Config, Insecure, was it 122, 122, 57, file. Error applying new configuration. Configuration validation failed. Specified install disk does not exist. Okay. How would I verify that? <laughs> Install disk is dev SDA. Okay, so what is the correct? Oh, there we go. Sweet. It's like they read my mind. Do I need to give it the dash and one nine two one six eight one twenty two dot fifty seven VDA? I mean, it's good, I guess, that you have the option. 1 1.7. 1 1.7. <laughs> Installing. I mean, that's kind of cool. I'm glad I didn't have the, something like this when I was setting up my cluster, though. Because this seems like it's a little too easy. <laughs> this is like the... Uh, the Mini Kubi and, and those where everything just goes.
I mean, I'm sure I've got some misconfigurations or poorly chosen configuration options in my cluster. I'm 100% positive of that. But they're my choices. <laughs> I'm the one that's going to have to fix them anyway. I hope it doesn't need more space than I gave it. <laughs> Stage is booting. Connectivity is okay. Why not great? Connection refused. If this node is the first node in Talos Bootstrap against one of the following IP, if this node is the first node Okay, so maybe, oh, that's funny. They specifically, <laughs> so do I need to do the bootstrap? If this node is the first node, Why isn't that in here, though? To apply the machine configs, you need another IP. OK. Oh, okay, here we go. So I need to do the Talos. Oh, that's not going to help me. I need this one. Talos control. Eight one two two dot fifty. What seven? Excuse me. One nine two. One two two dot five seven. Do I need that version in there? What's the version? Oh, okay, so it's just, it's telling me the version. So, boom, boom. So I have nodes, endpoints, then I just do, in this case, bootstrap. Go away. Obey me. Okay, let's see what's happening. Running, but not ready. I, mean, I like this. It kind of makes me sad that I can't. I'll bet there's there's probably something in Talos Control that lets you have that little block up in the corner. Still not ready. Controller failed. Error fetching pod status. Crash loop back off.
You know, refreshing pod status there, refreshing pod status. Oh yeah, I, I may be having an issue. If I remember right, the CPU on this machine may not have all of the VM instructions. So that's, that could be a thing. <laughs> has prevented the request from succeeding. One machine, not ready. Kublet is healthy, however. At least there's that. API server healthy, controller manager healthy. Everything says it's healthy, but it's still not ready. Connectivity is still only okay. It's not using enough CPU or RAM. Bootstrap should be called once on a single control plane. After a few moments, you'll be able to download your client configuration. Sure. Oh, ready is true. Cool. All right, so let's add it. Six eight dot one two two dot fifty seven endpoints. Failed to create client connection, failed to resolve configuration. Talos config file is empty. So I need to do the dash dash talos config again. Talos config. going on that's that's a long time to be RPC unavailable transport error while dialing <laughs> oh yeah that would be a problem Details. All right, so now in theory, I have to reload you. We should have a new cluster on here, right? Right? Yes, we do. One node. Wow, it's so clean. <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen it so clean. I mean, that's pretty cool. No, I take that back. That's really cool. Now, is there some way I can automate this stuff? I 
Ever enable, manage PKI, scale down, scale up. Tool to inspect the running Talos machine. Interactive dashboard is enabled for all Talos except for. On the physical video console. Oh, okay, so that's the dashboard. That would be kind of cool if that could be a web page. Mess that up. Yeah, this would run great. Because Talos assumes complete control of the disk, so. So let's, let me look at this back. We go back here. Because I see an ARM64 metal. That means in theory, that should be able to run on a Raspberry Pi. Which, you know, the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm liking it. I mean, just looking at this right here. Although, it says that it has four gigs of RAM. I don't think I gave it four gigs. this in the that's cool file let's disconnect and power you down I'm gonna have to uninstall Talos control I wonder if there's something in the script to be able to do that. Let's go back to here. I guess I didn't need to open another one.
Let's copy it. Maybe it has a flag, right? Have you got the flag? Oh, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it is uninstall only. What? Well, let's see. Oh, it looks like it's just the binary. Though. I guess as long as it's not, there's no uh, libraries, right? was fun that's that's definitely something i'm gonna have to take a look at more in depth that's but i mean that's a much bigger commitment that is well i have been considering rebuilding i mean i already kind of started it from a security perspective it does take me out of the It takes me out of the OS side of things from a security perspective. So I would need to look at a number of things. Like they say that it doesn't have uh, SSH and that's fine. But what if you break out of a container? Then what? What do you have access to if you get into the actual machine, right? Do they have anything? config okay actually before i deleted talus control and powered this thing off i probably should have poked around at that a little bit hmm I mean, I got, we got 20 minutes. Let's spend 20 minutes on that real quick. I guess it's that one. Uh, you know what? I want to edit you. Cannot contain a space. Fine. No spaces. Let's start it back up. and reinstall Talus Control. Talus Config. Although, <laughs> Does it have a new IP? No, oh, it doesn't. I think it needed node. So 
we don't want it to be namespace, right? But endpoint 122.57. All right, let's see what we got here. Can apply a configuration bootstrap collection of commands for managing local clusters. Okay. Now we should do the completion if we're going to screw around with it. Run conformance. Containers. Cluster dashboard with node overview. Oops. So if I do... Trail to determine endpoints. Uh, crap, what is the default port? Four four three. I knew it was a six. Nodes are not set for the command. I already did. Mm. One two dot one six eight. Dot one twenty two dot fifty seven. Certificate signed by unknown authority. Yes, we know. I know him, for he is me. All right, let's go back to the, the quick install. Off to the getting started. Actually, can I still get there this way? Okay. Or not. I have to create pod sandbox. Load flannel. Interesting. I mean, it says everything's running. Oh, that's interesting because API. Oh, there we go. Flannel. I was like, wait a minute. Why isn't there a flannel controller running? And is flannel really just one? Unlike Calico with like 10,000? I mean, test network policy not found. Oh, that's because it's not there. But like, Calico, 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 Calico.
and then oh calico and then oh oh i guess i don't have anything in there but you see what i'm saying That's just kind of interesting. But so is this. Although it says it's running now. Oh, it's a five minute old error. Oh, and this isn't there because... I need to install... Is it here? That's not what I'm looking for. Here we go. I could have swore there was something in here specifically to install. here. All oh, metrics are visible. Yeah, there used to be a button here to install. Let's see. Let's do a quick search before I go too much farther down that rabbit hole. Cluster settings, lens metrics. Yeah, that's that's what Detect. I don't like that. Um, but this is their version. Uh, okay. 
pads back the metrics that was removed. Oh boy. So I need to go back here. General preferences. extensions list. No, that's the registry. Where did they hide extensions? There we go. Pasta. In stale. Okay. Cool. You know what's dumb is, I just accepted it. It's got 10 stars. That's not the best of ideas. Now it's acting funky. Awesome. Did I just fall into the trap? I'm going to bet I just did the stupidness. There we go. All right, starting you back up. I mean, I guess I should really just be working on Oh, good, it's disabled. Just get rid of you. No thanks. I think I've done it on here before. Yeah. Or you have to build it from source. <laughs> that it has binaries available. Wait. Hang on. So that's 03. Okay. So it's just one back. That's no big deal. Install with one L. Okay. What do we want to do? Uh, we want to... I want to connect to a different server. 
That's all. Hello, attach. Sanitize, edit, help, kill. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, logs, pods. Where's deployments? I mean, I really want to change clusters, though. Uh, let's do help. General aliases, command mode, filter mode, navigation. J is down. G is go to top. H is... L I don't like that at all. Oh, great. Okay. I understand now why why it's so beloved. It's like Vim. mode then what no nope. I mean at least say what namespace I'm in. Okay, well, you know what? Oh, what's, what did that do? Uh, control X. Oh, it just changes sorting. Good. Whew. Goodbye. All right, we will revisit canines at a point in the future that is not today. 
because for now, it's five o'clock. And do you know what happens at five o'clock? I turn into a pumpkin, kind of. I think we did some good today though. Basically got the entire uh, Ansible library running. I need to add some more stuff to it though. Um, the firewall needs to be a bit more judicious. Right now the firewall rules are pretty much 100% set around a Kubernetes cluster. Um, that's why I can't really run it against my other stuff just yet. Maybe that's what we're doing tomorrow. Maybe not. We'll see. But for now, thanks for hanging out. Numplex. Numplex. Great talking to you. Again. Uh, hope to see you around some more. And if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, or don't, you know, you do you. And if you've stuck around this long, thanks a lot. Really mean it. See you later for now.